Hello, how's it going? Thanks for coming back to the show. Welcome to the Kainan Book Show. Um, so this is a book show that just a, a stream I started just to uh, um, help motivate myself to read some of my backlog. Um, I meant to do another episode soon, uh, more sooner than this one, but I just I couldn't get the free time. So um, I'm sneaking in a quick. Uh, episode today to read um, chapter 24 of um, 1Q84. So I've been calling it IQ84. Uh, and I, I would read Anna Karenina now, but for um, a couple of reasons. One, I'm looking through my original um, episode, I realized there were some um, uh, comprehension <laughs> Uh, issues with my summary so I wanted to fix that up and um, for the next episode and also two it was bothering me that I couldn't do two chapters of 1Q84 because to get the full story I feel like you have to read two, two chapters per session just so you can get the Almame side and the Tango side but all I had was an Almame side so I wanted to clear that up today <laughs> as quickly as I can um, hopefully I'll read this a lot quicker. Um, so what's happened with the IQ84 side? Let's have a look. Um, so we're on we just read chapter 23 and it talks about um, how you know it starts off with Aomame and Ayumi kind of having this weird um, Bohemian lifestyle. Um, sometimes it's a bit weird for me to see uh, such that kind of a story in a Japanese book just because of my experience with the uh, anime and manga so which are usually like targeted towards a younger demographic so that's understandable and I think it's yeah it's nice it's interesting. Um, but yeah, sometimes that kind of story material is a hit and miss. Um, and I don't really think it adds too much to the story other than add sexuality. Um, yeah, uh, sexuality can be used well in stories, but you have to have um, a plan and a purpose for it. It's quite happen to make the character more interesting. So that's uh, a bit of a criticism. Um, and then Ayumi kind of gives um, Aomame more intel on Sakigaki, which is just finds it more fishy, uh, fishy that, you know, the things that are being reported about Sakigaki and how no one's going after them. And then, yeah, there's a horrible story revealed about Ayumi's past. Uh, it's very confronting. Um, so there's a, as you can tell, there's a big, theme about um, domestic vi violence in the story. Um, I think that's something that's quite important perhaps to Murakami. What did to highlight? Japan's a little bit slow in um, in social political issues and um, it might to a Western viewer this might seem kind of like an old and tired storyline but maybe for Japan I don't know much about Japan um, that this might be something that there is still quite struggling in I uh, I do know they struggle a lot with uh, workplace um, sexual harassment and that type of deal and it still does quite exist in their culture so that's unfortunate if this is a very relevant um, plot point Oh, that's uh, interesting. So again, I've probably already summarized this and then um, yeah, um, one of um, the dogs at the Dowager, the, um, the, um, the women's shelter that the Dowager is running, one of the dogs have mysteriously died in a very horrible manner and they exploded in all their guts are spilled on the ground and no one knows how it happened and why. 
um, but that's not really what I wanted to get back to. Obviously, chapter 24 is a Tango ep um, episode, or <laughs> Tango chapter. So, um, again, I just wanted to get uh, summarize what happened in chapter 22. Again, we've gone through this last episode. Um, so, Tango uh, and Komatsu got, were interested in. Um, in Fuka Eri because she wrote Air Chrysalis and it had a lot of potential and Komatsu um, you know is very interested in discovering new talents and or um, making a lot of money from those talents so um, he got he wants Tango to rewrite Air Chrysalis so that it could be more refined and better sold to the public you know, and I, and I think it's a mutually exclusive exclusive kind of thing. He wants to make a lot of money, but he also is really genuinely interested in um, new talents and making them um, being the one that discovered them um, and sharing them to the public because it's great reading a great book. You know, it's a lot of you know, it's great if you're reading. Yeah, it's it's good to have a. I, I can relate, like it's good to have good books um, out in the world, out into the public. Okay. So without further ado, I'll probably get back into reading. Uh, Right. I just wanted to clarify first, um, first and foremost again, um, from chapter 22, it was established that Fuka area has gone missing. Um, yeah, again, I was talking about how Tango uh, rewrote Fuka Eri's book and uh, Komatsu and Tengu both planned to um, get the book out into the public and make a bit of money and make uh, Fuka Eri famous. Um, for Komatsu, who is uh, Fuka Eri's foster parent, um, they want to smoke out Akebono and Sakegaki just to um, gauge a response from them and, you know, creating um, a lot of uh, publicity for a person that has escaped the the combine, commune, um, it would be very bad for them. So, um, and lo and behold, Fuka Eri's gone missing. Um, she said she was gonna stay at an apartment of some sort that is owned by Busino's family and meet up with um, essentially her foster sister in a way, um, which is Ozami. Uh, but that didn't happen. Fuka Eri's gone missing and it could be Sakigaki 
um, but she could have just been she could have just like left upon her own devices we don't currently know
hey guys I've run out of time so I will have to continue this episode 2 at another time um, I'm gonna be calling this episode 2.1 and the next episode is going to be 2.2 uh, yeah run out of time uh, I guess we can go through the word file basically um, so again preface of the chapter we were really worried about Fuku Eri um, a moment ago but it seems like all is good um, Tango opens a opens his door one day to leave and buy groceries or something uh, when he finds a an envelope with a cassette tape uh, and when he played the cassette tape it was a pretty relaxed um, recording of Fuku Eri playing her normal self uh, and all it said was just that Fukuyori was happy with the book Tango has written about her own story um, but she felt like it, wa it wasn't really hers anymore uh, and that she really was, is not interested in being a writer and doing the whole um, press release um, thing that um, Komatsu and Elisino and Tango um, had trained her to do So she wants to run away from that, um, and she, yeah, we find out that she's left on her own volition. It seems that Azami is helping her to do that, um, and you can hear like kids playing in the background and a, I think, an open road. You can hear cars. Yep. So we'll leave it at that. Um, oh, actually, one more. Uh, and she mentions the little people a lot that they're not happy with being written about on a book and that um, you know Tango should be worried and be careful because the little people can uh, hurt Tango and we just have seen a dog being exploded <laughs> in the shelter so you know, we can deal with whatever now we don't know if the little it very easily could be like the little people could be Sakigaki <laughs> I've seen there's uh, but how they're doing the supernatural things is a mystery uh, we have to find out so I think that's the, uh, the rest of the chapter because there's Kindle estimates about another 20 minutes and I've barely got 5 minutes uh, so bye guys thanks for coming uh, I'm sorry for the abrupt